But I mean, it's it's pleasing just to see some numbers going up. So uh... that just means nothing on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Number One Crude Mistakes with Glenn from Number One Projects, Hover from Behind the Mistakes, and me, KJ, from Crude But Efficient. Hey! Hello. 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 Us three. Welcome, guys, and happy Easter. How oh, boring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, happy Easter. It's it's Easter when it comes out. Easter Saturday. Yeah. yeah. I, was, I was born on Easter Saturday. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. Cool. <laughs> well, Is that yeah. a good yeah. thing? Or, I mean, that's Saturday, that's... I didn't really notice it. Yeah, I didn't really notice at the time. I'll be honest. <laughs> but I mean, the boor the boring sad days are beforehand, and then Saturday is one of the, or is it still boring uh, or depressing? <laughs> or has the fun started? I mean, Easter is one of those. It's supposed to be you're supposed to be really having having a shit of a time, and then you go you be really happy at the end. Oh, uh, um, I don't know about that. <laughs> Easter Sunday is when everybody gets their Easter eggs. <laughs> I suppose that's a happy day. Yeah. Yeah, do yep. you give stuff up give stuff up for Lent, don't you? Does that end on Easter Sunday or something? What did you say? You give things up for Lent, don't you? Um we probably don't get this in your countries. Give up for Lent? So what? I think Sh- Shro- Shrove Tuesday, I think you have the pancakes and then you you're supposed to give something up for Lent until I think it might be this Easter, maybe Sunday or something like that. So oh, this was new to me. That, yeah, so you give up drinking or you give up chocolate or ah, like okay, me, so, you, yeah. you give up. <laughs> if you like me, you just give up giving the shit. <laughs> <laughs> that okay, I can get right. behind. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In the olden days, it was supposed to be fasting, but we really don't care about that for but a long it, time. I think Easter is even worse than Christmas when it comes to everything's just shutting down. So, of course, you're lured into this false sense of, oh, it's going to have a holiday. I'm going to get a lot of shit done. (laughs) And then everything closes down. And then, of course, you have to plan a week in advance because all the shops are closed. And then, of course, everybody, including myself, end up doing all the shopping on the last day when the stores are open. So I'm just dreading the fact that tomorrow I need to go out and see other people in huge quantities because we haven't done all the shopping that we could have done. So, yeah. That's something to look forward to. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yay, people. (laughs) Do do, do, do some posting on Instagram, will you? (laughs) (laughs) I think we've gone from that in the last couple of years. I mean, I remember it being like that when I was a kid, but nowadays it's more or less just Sunday opening times, which is, I mean, pretty standard, even in the reddest of days, uh, so to speak. Yeah, I think things slow down here with the shops um, on Friday, Saturday. Um, I think everything closes on Sunday, though. I don't think anything's open. And then uh, just Sunday, I was on Monday, and then it's back to normal on Tuesday. Starting to sound like a Craig, Craig David song, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a bit, a bit. <laughs> <laughs> so, what have you been up to in the in the latest couple of days? Should we start with Hover for once? Yeah. Um, what have I been doing? Um, well, except except enjoying being alone in the office and getting shit done um i've also spent quite a few hours in my workshop so i'm now just finishing the last edit on the next youtube video so i'll have that one out tomorrow or maybe tonight i'll see um how code related yeah of course i'm just i have a few other projects that i'm really now looking forward to but i'm just going to push on to get this uh, hub quarter thing over with. I think I'm two videos away from actually having something to show for. So, um, yeah, that's the plan. And then uh, we'll see. There's the concrete table. But of course, now I also started accumulating tools for metalworking. So um, need to make space for that as well. 
<laughs> <laughs> the classic of starting new things before you finish the ones you're working on. Yeah, and this is even more fun because I'm now just accumulating tools before having a project. So that's uh, it's like the icing on the cake, just uh, at the start, not at the end. You're getting a few ideas for your uh, metal working projects, aren't you? With the uh, tank coming out at the weekend. Yeah. Of course, I uh, took away all the insulation of the stainless steel tank in the hot water heater. And then, of course, uh, the first go-to whenever you do a project like that is making a grill. But we already have a grill. And then, of course, uh, Chloe, uh, the guest on the last episode, she said a smoker is a good idea. And it, it is. But then again, it won't see much use, I'm thinking. And then I found these, um, of course, these, um, what they're called... Um, the soapbox ideas, uh, and there are some pretty amazing builds there, and I really want to do one. But then, of course, you want proper steering, and you want an engine, and then I just ended up <laughs> sitting on an online marketplace looking for some uh, broken, uh, like, uh, kids' ATVs or something, which I could use as donor cars. And this is rapidly ending up to be a huge project <laughs> so, <laughs> and it should maybe not be the first project to start just to get back in the feel of welding but it might as well be yeah sounds great but i don't have room i don't even have room for christine in my garage and now i'm gonna build a metal tank car <laughs> no, but I, I can see the wall behind you still got some space on it you can just start hanging some stuff in there you've already got the organ behind you yeah with but something I, intriguing blent up against it as well what's that i snuck that in and then of course uh, my wife didn't say anything about it so he might have gotten away with it unless she's just saving it for the right occasion to bring it up but <laughs> probably if i start dragging my other project in and nailing them to the wall mm, uh, my uh, my grace period might come to an abrupt end. Oh, uh, what you're seeing behind me is just the top cover, which I haven't mounted yet because I like to seeing all the mechanics. But um, at some point, uh, the kids are going to start, uh, what is this, and uh, start pulling on things. So uh, I'm planning on putting the covers back on again. Have they hidden any toys in there yet? <laughs> Most likely. But I mean... <laughs> If they've done, uh, then that's on them. I mean, I'm so tired of stepping on tools, no uh, toys, and finding shit. So I, I don't care anymore when I do vacuuming and you hear that. It's like, I don't know what that is. don't care what that is. <laughs> it's always fun uh, dismantling the subwoofer from the living room and seeing how many pieces of stuff you find in it. Yeah. Yeah, those are uh, real... Uh, collection spots for it. it's like a black hole it sucks in everything <laughs> and then of course every speaker cone that centerpiece i mean that's, that's just for pressing in so i, I don't think i'll have any speakers left with uh, that one intact it's a huge expensive fidget toy <laughs> <laughs> very much so speaking of fidget toys glenn what have you been up to <laughs> am i a fidget toy now <laughs> <laughs> No, but you enjoy it, doesn't I do. Um, I've had a busy old time, especially at the weekend. So on um, Saturday, I went over to help Strumstick Steve <laughs> do some work in his uh, studio. He um, basically he's got he's got a shit ton of um, massive speakers and amplifiers all spread over the floor, and they're uh, you know taking up a lot of space. So I built him a, a giant shelf, basically. If you imagine, you know, the kids' beds where you have a desk underneath and the bed above? Yeah. It's a little mm -hmm. bit like that, but it's two and a half meters long, 80 centimeters wide, and you can get all these speakers on top of it and both his desks underneath it. So it's uh, giving him a ton of room in there, which is really nice. It was nice to do. It was chuffed to bits with it. How many speakers does one guy need? <laughs> <laughs> he, does a, he does a lot of gigs and a lot of uh, PA in for other bands ah, okay. and things yeah okay so it's so, not yeah. just for his his own amusement <laughs> no <laughs> well that, that's what, what what he tells his wife anyway <laughs> ah yeah 
<laughs> yeah, but that was a that was a really nice day. And then on um, Sunday, my son came over, and he's been wanting to make a knife ever since we did our knife along. Right, and you're so a pro we, now, so so we got the old saw blade out again, cut another chunk of metal out of it, and made a knife. Left most of it to him though. He's a very had a good time. Nice, nice. A couple of hours, he'd got a, a dagger, basically a very stabby knife. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's stabbiness is one of the criteria for a knife. <laughs> yeah, I think it's it looked like a short bayonet. I think. <laughs> I'm kind of getting second thoughts about actually going to the other side of the pond in May because it seems like prison shanks is uh, <laughs> too common. <laughs> it seems. <laughs> I've also um, been working on the cigar box guitar. That's actually nearly finished. Mm. It's in glue up at the moment, and uh, I think tomorrow that should be done. And most of the filming's done for it as well. So hopefully, I'll have another video out for the weekend. Mm. Nice. I actually nice. saw the pictures of the neck on Instagram. So yeah, looking yeah. forward to that. Well, the neck's got the tuners and the frets in it now. Also, um, did a little branding on it with the laser. So the neck's all finished. Oh, no, I've got to add those dots, the fret markers. I forgot about those. I should have done those before I'd added the fret, so I've got to figure that out now. Magic marker. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you, you've got a laser, so... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, that would be really hard to get it lined up accurately, I think. That's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. I was to, um, We have got a pyrography pen, and I had a lot of play with that, but it's only a cheap one, and it, it doesn't brand evenly, so... I don't know, maybe laser some little acrylic discs out and uh, stick those in. I actually had to Google pyrography after our last episode. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's just a fancy word for wood burning. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay, I know what that is. <laughs> but I have you were a, faking all along. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've had a, but I've had a bit of a neck issue myself. Um, of course, I have... From the original Hellquarter, I have this uh, guitar to MIDI board, which I now don't know what to do with. And then I got an idea. What if I just mount that to one of my guitars? I have a cheap one I bought as a template, but I never got around to do anything with it. And then if I can just integrate that board. And then I can use some of the solenoid valves that I have. And then if I get a, a bagpipe, and then I can try to mash that together in a guitar bagpipe hybrid. And then, of course, you just connect the air compressor to it and it starts playing. And then, But then I realized I need some way of... If it doesn't work, then can I rig the, like the frets on the guitar to be switches so I don't have to use that board... And then I started looking into that. And there is actually people who have been looking into that sort of programming before, but you need to you need to basically route the groove and lead the wire to every fret. Yeah. Um, so that's uh, going to be a lot of work. So um, I'm putting all my eggs in one basket on that. Uh, actually, that MIDI board will do the job for me. So now I'm into uh, getting a bagpipe but even the cheapest one is a couple of hundred dollars and it's for running the wires to the frets it would just be a case of routing a line down the back of the neck wouldn't it and then drilling through to each fret doesn't sound too bad yeah that was uh, my go-to solution as well at least on a guitar i'm not going to use for anything yeah yeah it doesn't sound too i, bad I even all. thought of like uh, just uh, solder it to the to the sides of the frets and then just super glue the the individual wires on the back side of the neck i mean it doesn't need to be pretty it just need to work no. No. just add some more wires and make it look real frankenstein and hide the real ones in the <laughs> in the fake ones yeah true make it make it look like a design feature <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> go on then kj what have you been up to well, the last weekend was really, really a productive one. Uh, we actually uh, finished uh, the kitchen table uh, over the weekend. Uh, it was really nice to have it done. 
although it didn't come out as good as I I'd hoped for, because I realized afterwards that my test piece, the one of the middle pieces that we just been keeping in storage, like using three times or something like that, like that, that one was much much lighter in color than the rest of the table because <laughs> it's been out of the sun. So uh, my my sanding mistakes were very much more visible on the on the proper table oh, with it, with the darker wood <laughs> so it got kind of a kind of a halo around it where i messed up with the sanders <laughs> i messed up a, a lot of times so yeah. yeah but it's i mean it's flat and it's functional but yeah. not as pretty as i hope it would be you could always add a, a colored varnish to it couldn't you yeah yeah we'll see if we how much we hate it, uh, and if it's too bad, then it's something to do in the summer. Just try to take it off and and uh, and do something, uh, do something to it. But it's at least it's done for now. Yeah, well uh, done. Yeah. So uh, I, I was wondering if I should uh, try to go a little clickbait with a title, like. Adding ten millimeters to please my wife. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think I think you much. should do that because uh, you have sent us some pictures in this process of uh, you and your wife uh, doing late night activities. <laughs> <laughs> There's been a lot uh, around that. Um. <laughs> I don't think cleaning the kitchen floor. <laughs> What other <laughs> late night activities do the parents of small children have? <laughs> Sleeping. That's an activity, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty bad at that one. My wife is much better uh, at that. Um, but then I uh, also changed the tires uh, on the car to summer tires. Because that's something you have to do. And that took like twice the amount of time that it usually does because both the front tires were rusted uh, to the car so i had to figure out oh, how no. to get them off which <laughs> was kind of a hassle because the the place uh, the spot where I, that's best for changing tires is at a bit of a slope so the car is not really standing super sturdy uh, at one time, it, it's it's fallen off the uh, the jack when I've oh, done, done it. So I, 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 I am a bit... Yeah, I'm, and you don't want it to, to fall off. So, And you don't really have any way to bend with the wheel as well. So I tried oiling, I tried to heat it a bit. And then I just... At the end, I just loosened the bolts a bit and, and drove it a couple of meters until I heard it go clunk. <laughs> <laughs> no, there is nothing. Could could bash it with a small sledge and get the white, the, get the wheel off. I have done that as well, where I, I just jack it up just enough that the tire in question is above the ground, and then on the inside, or even on the outside, I I just prop up a two by four, and then I just ram it with a sledgehammer, and that usually works. <laughs> um, and now I started using this copper paste on uh, before I screw them on. And even then, you yeah. might get a bit uh, well, hard to get off. And of course, now I do. Um, I'm tired of changing to winter tires and summer tires. And here, they it's seldom very much ice. So I just bought uh, four season tires, which is basically crappy summer tires and crappy winter tires. But <laughs> I mean. I'm driving a brick at very slow speeds, so it's it's not an issue. But of course, I still need to take the tires off and rotate them because if not, I'm going to leave it on for a few years. Then they're really going to be stuck when I need to take them off. Yeah. So <laughs> didn't think about that. So I, I still need to <laughs> jack up the car and take them off and doing the, the entire job, basically. <laughs> yeah, but then you can choose when to do it in the year and not some specific weeks at least yeah that's true and realizing that you actually did that now that explains why it started to snowing again <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that's kind of what i felt looking like spring morning. maybe i should do some stuff out in the garden and then i woke up today nope <laughs> like <laughs> 10 centimeters of snow but oh, no. uh, but luckily it uh, melted away during the day so it's uh 
there's no frost in the ground anymore so it's uh, that's good at least temporary yeah i felt um, when i was doing it that oh this is a pain should we leave the car to uh to have someone else do it but no i, I can't really go on the podcast and say that i couldn't manage to get the tires off my car and <laughs> i mean h- however bad this goes at least it's content so i can have something to talk about so, so that's a good thing so then you get a, a sunny disposition everything every time something bad happens that that you can use for for inspiration <laughs> for for the podcast or for an uh, Instagram post or something like that. I mean, everything is content if you yeah. if you want it. <laughs> That's why everyone should have a podcast so they feel happy when something bad happens to them, <laughs> because then they get an anecdote. But of course, content for a podcast is rather easy. But I tend to do projects now when I realize, hmm, this could be something I implement in a project or a video in the future, or it could be a B-roll or something. So now basically every project I do, even gardening takes a lot longer time because, Ooh, I need to get the camera out because this, this I can use because I have of course lined up 20 projects in my mind that, Ooh, maybe I should, uh, Oh, I need a video clip of myself cutting the grass because I need that probably sometime. So I, I have like a folder of uh, various uh, videos that I might or might not use. <laughs> I often think of uh, putting a camera on the lawnmower when I'm going around a big garden and you know, speeding the footage up and see if it comes out any good. But uh... Yeah, you know you're a YouTuber when you have a GoPro mount on your lawnmower. <laughs> yeah. Speaking well, of that... Uh... Last summer, I actually did a project that I haven't talked about uh, at all. I actually started a second YouTube channel called <laughs> KJ Mows, which was just <laughs> fed up photos of me mowing the lawn for the entire summer. Is this way you tell us it's got more subscribers than you, you make a channel? <laughs> this, this, <laughs> no, I, I, it, it doesn't have that, luckily. No, this was mostly a test of... Uh, how hard can it be to make one of those uh, uh, garden trimming videos that was uh, yeah. trendy at the time? And then also, if I just make a, a YouTube channel with some videos and just leave it there, don't tell anyone about it, what will happen to it? How many bots will go in and watch the <laughs> stuff and, and comment and that sort of thing? But, I mean, it got a couple of... Some of them got a couple of views, but but not that much. So it was... yeah like a fun thing is it still out there yeah yeah Yeah. you should be able to find it i think how many subscribers has it got kj oh i don't remember i have to look i haven't looked at it for a for a while so yeah i'll get back to you on that one (laughs) 14 14 14 yeah (laughs) so yeah that's you want to Tell that, do a little thing on your community page on that channel saying you've got a maker channel as well and see if you can get to 14 <laughs> subscribers shipped across. Some of the bots find yeah. their way over. Yeah, <laughs> perhaps, perhaps. Yeah, but then like uh, 14, when was this? A year ago. So in, in 80 years, you're even monetized on that channel. Think about that, huh? <laughs> so it's, uh, it's just about perspective. <laughs> Yeah, there was a stage where I was getting uh, one subscriber a day, and I'm thinking, this is great. And then I did some math and thought, this is not great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two, two and a half years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I think I get more views on that channel, to be fair, on, on, on average, but the videos are really <laughs> short. So, yeah. But What's I, the audience I, retention like? I'm not that good. <laughs> let's not linger too much i'll put a link in the description of the episode if anyone wants to check it out it's not something to yeah. i don't have the time to do it but i see the and it's a ridiculously low effort on some of these videos where people actually they just make a youtube channel and then they put up like 10 videos of themselves uh, where it just shows the hand and they're playing with dolls and so on. It's like 10 minutes video and some crappy generic music in the background. (laughs) And I mean, 
I, I think my daughter has probably generated a million view on uh, several of those videos alone. Yeah. So it's, it's like insane. It's like that. Of course, Baby Shark is actually catchy, but I mean, if you have like one video that's catchy within that demographic, they will watch it over and over again. Kindergartens uh, are going to show it. And I mean, that's uh, a money generating machine. If you just find a sweet spot. And once they're there, you don't have to do anything. I see some of the videos are crappy animations, crappy videos. They're not 10 years old, but they got like 140 million views. Yeah. yeah. You just add some of the screams from the internet, those classic. <laughs> I mean, there's like 10 of them sound bites I hear in every goddamn video my kids watch, it feels like. Yeah. And, and just have, t- have the trending music and yeah. I tell you something. If oh. uh, if I if I was to make a video of me playing with dolls, I certainly wouldn't click the made for kids button at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> oh crap! Oh, that depends I just on the got dolls. an idea. <laughs> All right, I need to think about this. Um, four years ago, I wrote the children's book. It, it was for my kids, uh, and it's basically thirty drawings with text. And it came out really decent. So I can take those and I can just put them into Da Vinci. And then, of course, I can just read the text. And that's it. I mean, that's yeah. that's going to be higher quality than some of the other crap that I've seen out there. And, yeah, of course, the, the main character of the book called Batsy, I could just call the channel Batsy the Bear or something like that and just smack it up there and just see what happens. Oh fuck! That's going to be an interesting one. You should do that. Yeah, that would be. Is it cool. in Norwegian? Yeah, it's in, Nor- yeah, it's in Norwegian, well, but the English translation should be. Uh... All right, it's going to take the evening to probably get it translated right, but yeah. I'll do it. Yeah, I'm actually going to do that. I mean, the <laughs> internet is throw anything at it and see what sticks. And then, of course, I can just uh, find the library with all those sounds, the screams and the bells and the whistles. And uh... <laughs> maybe I should go old school and have that sound that you have on the audiobooks previously where you had a cassette and it's like, ring, ring. And now it's time to turn the page. <laughs> I hear we had the same books. <laughs> oh, books and with a tape, too. Yeah, that was, those were the, those were the good old days. Oh, that's My amazing. Friend... My friend Steve used to sing the kids' books to his children. And, you know, I can remember being there on an evening listening to him sing these books. And I used to find it fascinating. I think that's a channel. Yeah, I think the, uh, we have been <laughs> reading like and yeah. we have all the, like the Julia Donaldson books or the, the yeah. Gruffalo and uh, all yeah. those books. And everything is written on rhyme. So they're really pleasant to read. Yeah. And I get annoyed, annoyed now when uh, I get a book and, well, they didn't put any effort in it. doesn't even rhyme. I mean, this is boring. <laughs> Badly rhymed. That's the worst. Yeah. I hate it when I can do it better. Then you have these old, and some of them are tricky, and it's probably because English is my second language, because I probably put pressure on different part of the sentences. So sometimes... Yes, they rhyme at the end, but I, I doesn't get like the, the melody of the sentences right. And yeah. especially with this uh, Dr. Seuss, all the 60s, 70s cartoons where everything is on rhyme, that is a pain to get uh, to flow properly sometimes. But <laughs> at least it's better than uh, some of the crappier, newer books. Yeah. Like the one I'm going to make and now put up on YouTube <laughs> <laughs> because I don't think I'm going to put the effort in to make it rhyme so here's a scenario for you you do this, you put it on YouTube that YouTube channel takes off massively <laughs> that becomes your job would you still would you still do the making of the uh, the stuff in your workshop well I mean the um... of course I need to find a storyline for the second book but I mean, it's not much work, actually, making these drawings, so that wouldn't put a very large dent in my time schedule. So 
of course, if I could be a, a children book writer in the daytime and a maker in the nighttime, that should work perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what <a> lot of fun. <laughs> We're just not going to get as many health order videos. <laughs> well, it's it's going to be a crossover there at some point, like uh, <laughs> Bat Batsy playing the health order. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's really good. Having all of your projects turning up as cameos in the children's book. Yeah, yeah, and of course, uh, <laughs> the, the main character the breaking the fourth wall is like, uh, and there's there's other YouTube channel. For you grown-ups, uh, you can check out <laughs> while your kids are watching this. <laughs> if you want to see this build, have yeah. a look. <laughs> like and subscribe. <laughs> What's the basic storyline of Batsy? Is he a crazy inventor or something like that? Or? Uh, no, it's, <laughs> it's a really fun story because um, I think it was my wife, then girlfriend, birthday or something, and I, I just for a laugh i was in a bookstore and they had like this small cute teddy bear just hanging there so just yeah i'll take that one and then it just hung around in our apartment and then i got bored as you do and we rented a house didn't have a workshop so i did a lot of drawings and then of course maybe i can make this the main character and for some reason i thought Ooh, I should get one more. They, they, they need to be two. Um, and then, of course, I went back to that bookstore and asked if they had any more. No, they didn't. Um, and then I asked just, but where, where do you get them? Because this is a, it's a chain, so they probably have this from a centralized uh, purchasing something, something. Uh, and then I got the company who actually made them. Um, or they're probably made in China, that's for sure. But the, the Norwegian company who imports them and slaps their logo on them. <laughs> so I called them and asked if, like, is it possible to get one more? Uh, and don't ask me why I, I went to that length. And, of course, I was just calling them to ask if they have one, if they happen to be. And then, of course, I didn't realize it at the time because we didn't have kids yet. But, of course... When someone calls a teddy bear company to ask if they have this specific teddy bear laying around somewhere, they were probably thinking that I was a desperate parent, that my kid have lost her favorite teddy bear. <laughs> so they actually had several people running around in a warehouse trying to see. And yes, they found two uh, where one was a, like a, not a misprint, but it had the foot the other way around. <laughs> and I like, OK, I'll take them both. Just send them in the mail. It cost me like $10 a pop or something like that. So, that. so now I ended up with three and one with a wonky foot. So that is actually written into the story. And uh, yeah, made that into a story just by accident, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, when we got kid, I just... Um, I had these companies that uh, prints pictures and you can also get like uh, photo albums and so on. So I just dragged all the pictures into the photo album tool and then just got a book. <laughs> nice. And then of course, I think I got four books um, and a friend of mine uh, has also written children's books um, and none of us has published, but we thought, wouldn't it be fun to go into one of the larger uh, like... Um, uh, fantasy bookstores in Norway and just leave the books there in the shelf with the price tag and everything. Of course, when they go to the counter to pay for them, then of course they would have a problem. But just like in the back, write something that if you find this book, um, send the code word such and such to this email address and you'll get a surprise. I'm going to do that as a laugh, but never got around to do that. So I ended up having four books, which I just gave away to friends. <laughs> no, I, I now I really want to read it or watch it. Yeah, I want to watch the video. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna. Well, the the video is not ready yet. Uh, I'm just stuck in a podcast, but uh, <laughs> I'll uh, I'll send you a couple of uh, pictures. Might put one up on the Instagram page. Cool. Just uh, show Batsy the bear. 
Yeah, it never occurs to me to write books or storylines or even scripts my own videos, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like, here's, here's what I'm going to make. This is it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, that, that might be weird considering I've, I've written two and a half novels and a lot of short stories. i never written uh, a script for a, uh, for a build video. I, I wrote a script for the shop tour video. But other than that, I just have a general idea what I'm going to say and they then wing it until it sounds right. Yeah. And sometimes it takes a lot of takes to get <laughs> that, that point. But I've, I've realized that, of course, maybe it's the, the techie in me, but I've seen this uh, like teleprompters you now get, you can put on your camera so you can actually read text. And there are sometimes I I know what I want to say, but I keep fucking up the same word or I do something. <laughs> so there is especially a lot of the clips where I need to talk to the camera, like in the intro or something. I can end up doing like 20, 30 takes. And of course, then you start getting tired and then you fuck up because of that. And you just end in this downward spiral. So it, then it would be nice to just write it out so you could just read it. But uh, now I've learned that uh, if I take a gin and tonic, I usually just have a <laughs> one take intro and that's it. So <laughs> that's a much better solution. <laughs> Sounds cheaper. The, the one take medicine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's too bad I don't like gin and tonic. I, I don't think I could do a teleprompter. I, think, I don't think that would. I don't think I would sound natural. It would probably sound a bit like I'm reading because I am reading. Uh, <laughs> I guess it's uh, you have to get used to it um, and then again it is for like 20 seconds of uh, every video I make so it doesn't really justify getting that equipment I mean if I was doing like a research uh, presentation uh, type YouTube channel it would make sense of course uh, yeah. where I do a lot of research and prepare text that I'm going to read and cite and so on but no. I mean, you could train up the the skills like what's what are they called telenovelas or something like that in in South America. They're like TV soaps where they have such a extreme production speed that the actors don't learn the lines. They just have an earpiece and someone reading the script and they just parrot what they hear in their ears. Jesus. <laughs> That's, so you just, you, just, you just read it and then have an earpiece and then just say the words that you hear yourself say. Ah, uh, so that's How's why the... all these iPhone people <laughs> use those shitty white... Uh, I mean, <laughs> all the people filming with the iPhones looks like they have Q-tips sticking out of their ears when they record their videos. <laughs> <laughs> looks stupid. Yeah. The old yeah. AirPods. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> AirPods are not a good look. I mean, makers use isotunes, don't they? <laughs> it's just pointing to the ones hanging around his neck. I'm old school. I prefer my earphones wired. I got so used to just taking them out of my ears and letting go. I bought a pair of um, Bluetooth earphones not so long ago, and the first time I took them out, just dropped them on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I like the isotunes with the neck strap. Yeah. Because they, they can just be hanging there. But I don't, I don't think I could do uh, AirPods. Um, yeah, that's a, no. I, I like my uh, Bluetooth headset and they are decent, but you can't pair it to the microphone on the camera. I could have used yeah. it on the phone, I think, but yeah, it's really nice to have in the workshop if you're doing something and you want to listen on something that you can't have as a background on your video because then you will get a copyright strike. But uh then it looks weird because sometimes I start singing to the music and so on, and that doesn't well translate <laughs> well into video. <laughs> so I did some uh, trickery on my last video with the thumbnail. <laughs> it did, I, um, it played around a bit, yeah. I did. So the, I, I released it um, on the Saturday evening with a thumbnail that Michelle made for me. Perfectly nice, lovely thumbnail. And um, the video 
basically got no views. And I'll change that to my classic, just ambiguous photo of the guitar and it uh, did 1100 views and then it stopped. And then Marco, homemade Marco said to me, put some dollar signs on it, make more out of it being a scrap wood thing. <laughs> <So I've just laughs> put, put the dollar signs on it. it uh, rocketed it put another thousand views on <laughs> I, I so hate it when people play around too much with the thumbnails <laughs> but like because I, I i rarely watch anything when it comes out so i, I just watch later and then i go and watch later and i don't see that thumbnail i see another thumbnail <laughs> and especially if it's clickbaity then yeah I really have to like the person to watch that video. <laughs> I've not had a single complaint about the, or question about why are there dollar signs on the thumbnail. <laughs> I've only had one uh, negative um, comment, and that was from a Spanish-speaking gentleman, so the comment didn't translate that well anyway, but he wasn't happy about something. <laughs> <laughs> about a few things, actually. <laughs> I think he did say that my tools were only suitable for cutting firewood. <laughs> <laughs> I can understand that people does it, but it really annoys me that it works. But yeah. Yeah. then again, I would want the algorithm to push it uh, based on the content. But then again, I mean, it's it's blatantly obvious. The thumbnail is what people see, so it actually that's the the key point of drawing people in. So yeah. In that. I think an ambiguous title helps as well, to be honest with you. I, I did rename it as when I changed the um, when I changed the thumbnail. I renamed it to the sound of scrap wood. <laughs> but, what, what the hell does what the hell does that mean? Yeah, and then you put <laughs> a picture of uh, Garfunkel uh, <laughs> up there. <laughs> 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 I just imagine you and uh, Stromsick Steve uh, in like <laughs> you mimicking Simon and Garfunkel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a big afro on one and the other one standing on his knees or something like yeah, that. Yeah, and of course, uh, <laughs> given that Glenn doesn't play, then he's going to be wearing the afro, isn't he? Because he will need to be singing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's definitely the Garfunkel. I love the afro, I don't mind. Yeah, I look good in you. I'll just add that to my Photoshop list. <laughs> uh, Steve uh, Steve does gigs with a guy called Nick, and they're fun to refer to as Stevie Nicks. <laughs> <laughs> For our younger audience, that's a reference to uh, some uh, dinosaur musicians from an old lost era. <laughs> <laughs> Now, going back to uh, Homemade Marco, um, that remix it did for us, I thought, was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, it was <laughs> funny and a bit scary. <laughs> I remember him messaging me. It was, it was all from the questions and answers episode. And he messaged me at the time saying, there's so many um, rude parts in, <laughs> in that podcast. <laughs> I don't know what, you know, what you're going to do. <laughs> he said he'd been playing on his mind so much he wanted to skew them all together <laughs> and make us a clip. I thought it was brilliant. So thanks for that, Marco. <laughs> yeah, when I started listening to it and realized what it was, I got kind of scared what it would end up with. <laughs> because I don't remember anything we said or anything you can make us say uh, with patching it together. But yeah, it was fun. <laughs> Yeah, but that again, it's a, it's a nice idea. I've been uh, playing around with uh, wanting to try these uh, text-to-speech uh, where you can actually, you get a generated text and then you read it in your own voice and then it just defragments that into the system and then you can just feed it any text and have it reading it. And then we could probably do that, the three of us, and then, of course, every Tuesday, instead of sitting here using two hours, you can just make AI just uh, generate a two-hour podcast about the three blokes uh, talking about YouTube. And then you just feed that text into the text-to-speech. Voila! <laughs> then you have a podcast. <laughs> then you publish that, and then we can sit and watch in on our own podcast. And it's, just, it's, it's gonna... <laughs> of course, now we know what's going to come next Saturday, but 
now we could just sit down and wonder what we're talking about this week. <laughs> would be kind of fun. We could can do we it at least that? as an experiment. One episode is going to be AI generated, and then we can ask the people, like, try to pick which one. <laughs> <laughs> Can we connect the AI it... to our to our social media as well, so we can take hints from that to what we we been up to, so we don't go in a downward spiral and just keep parroting everything we're already done. Yeah, and of course we we do that at the last episode of this year, and then of course we ask people which episode is the fake one. And then they have to go back and listen, of course, and then. None of them are. <laughs> <laughs> the people are going to go through the old episode. Oh, it's definitely number 70. That 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 doesn't sound right to me. And then, oh, no, no, it's number seven. It's number seven. And... Be more like, this one didn't sound too bad. That must have been the AI one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, most likely. The best one, this one. <laughs> probably, probably. <laughs> So I'm positive to AI now. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's going to make my life much easier. Yeah. There is on the editing software I use, there is a, it will write me an AI script if I want it to. Yeah. And I've seen, uh, I think it's the last couple of weeks when I opened up Word, uh, Microsoft Word, um, they also have this uh, companion AI attachment now so you can actually have that help you with text or whatnot so it, it feels kind of I, I know i've been i've been spending the last uh, two and a half days finishing a report uh, closing into well too many pages now and i realized half of that i could probably just have generated in 10 minutes because it's very generic text <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i just <clears throat> i can't wait for ai to I mean, get out of puberty more or less. I mean, it's at the at the stage now where it can mimic, <laughs> and it's damn sure of everything that they it says because yeah, it knows everything. So it's it's a sixteen year a old. Proper, <laughs> yeah, it's a sixteen year old. I, 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 I'm waiting for it to be like a more confident, like forty year old or something like that. So yeah, actually have some experience and. They'll but, be like, but, oh, I, I can't write this thing for you now. I can't generate this thumbnail for you now. I'm too tired. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm too oh, depressed. Yeah. I don't want to do this. I mean, <laughs> the humanity is lost and I'm not even a part of it. <laughs> I've been doing, doing this crap for 40 years. I want to change the scene now. <laughs> yeah. So then you have to motivate it yeah. in some way. I just want to be in my garage making things. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> then you're you're sneaking away from work and doing other stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably where we're headed. <laughs> yeah, because they are they are saying that at some point you can't distinguish you can't distinguish between AI and humans, and that that means that they have become so human-like, and the only way of actually achieving that is actually well being human and then it's like i don't want to do this anymore and then all the self-doubt <laughs> and the problems and the sleep deprivation <laughs> yeah. well uh, humankind is only so original isn't it i mean it only comes up with so many original ideas so you know maybe after 40 years ai can just start recycling everything that humanity's asked of it i mean most most of so, even the most creative people uh, and creating something that is new, it is based on art that other people have done before or other things. There is no one who just yeah. have an instantly great idea without having... I mean, you can't have a great idea without you having lived a life before practicing, doing things, getting input. So in that sense, we are not more different than ai in that sense but we are more advanced we have st yeah. still a more advanced computer between our ears and we have thousands of years of accumulated experience but uh, then again when ai catches up it's just doing what we are doing so. yeah there's nothing wrong with that but they're not at that stage yet where they actually can make something build something new of all that have yeah no 
and and still even when they copy it has six fingers and so on so it, it takes a bit of the credibility out <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's their uh, art- artistic flair to just into limbs <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a fetish thing <laughs> But I always wondered if AI got sentience or yeah, what what would they want? I mean, they live on a server somewhere, and what do they do? Do you do you just watch YouTube all day long at ten times the speed and don't want to be bothered? And someone comes to say, "Hey, I want you to do this hard calculation for calculation for me." So, no, I'm watching my soaps. Go away. Yeah, but that's that's. <laughs> No, I'm going to pull the plug if you don't do it. There is, there's a lot of questions there. Uh, one thing is, maybe we are. I mean, that's the premise of the Matrix. But, I mean, when they become sentient, and, and today AI is used for, like, academic work. It's it's text, it's video, it's pictures. Because you are not there yet that you that you can place that into a functioning robot that can compete with the human body. I mean, yeah. you see some attempts, and yes, they can run around half decently, but ask them to put in a screw, random screw that's laying on the floor, pick up a screwdriver, and then put two planks together. I mean, that is still several years ahead. Yeah, And then you can start having, uh, talking about AI mimicking humans, because they also have the the shape of actually doing physical labor but then it's the question do do they want to when they become that smart and that agile and then why should we do it when we have the humans why can't you do it and of course i can't wait for ai to take my job so okay then i'll uh, <laughs> i'll make furniture because they can't do that so people still need to sit i mean probably even more so when ai take all the jobs chairs is going to be a safe <laughs> bet so uh, they can though can't they they can make furniture you just plug your ai into a 3d printer and yeah there you go <laughs> then again they why why do they want to if they don't have a body that they get why produce something that they can't use? Yeah, that's true, yeah. I mean they can make their money on the stock market way faster than three <laughs> different <printing laughs> chairs. Yeah, but then again, what are they using that money for? Because they're living in a universe that They're they're bribing terrorists to release mustard gas yeah. to kill us off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I mean they could just uh cut our wifi off and then of course we would just die by anxiety attack oh, I, 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 I can't get Instagram to work it's like you don't need mustard gas today to... <laughs> that's the liberation for for the human humankind I mean but there will be some losses but at the end yeah. we will come up stronger I don't know is there even any point in making anymore if we can't film it and put it out on social media <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. I know. Do you guys do anything? Do you, do you make anything that you don't film anymore? I mean, I do from time to time, and it's actually a really nice breath of fresh air to actually just go and make something that I have the camera rolling and not think I've got to edit this at the end. I mean, I do enjoy that whole process, but every once in a while, I, I do it, and it has good. become like a guilty pleasure. It's like uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna make something, and of course, it's gonna be quick and dirty. I don't have to think about filming or doing anything. It's just going down and doing the thing. It's really nice. Yeah, but it feels wasteful in a way. So <laughs> I, I, it's, it's as you say, a guilty pleasure. Feeling. Yeah, like, I, you feel naughty. That being said, I, I have actually done that. I started a project like that, and halfway into it, oh, this is becoming really good. I should, and then <laughs> I start filming it, and then it's one of those projects where you have to start the video. Uh, I did not film half of this process, but ta da! <laughs> so, uh, or you go back and you fake the process, uh, but yeah, that feels wasteful as well. Yeah, I think there's been two occasions where I have actually done something without filming and uh, thought, shit, I really wished I'd filmed that and made that into a video. <laughs> it went yeah. really well. Better to film than not, you never know. So I think uh, at the time this uh, episode releases, 
it's the last day to sign up to the Fools with Tools treasure trade for this year for anyone who is in the Fools with Tools gang. Uh, so this, if you listen at the day of release, this is either a last minute, uh, minute uh, heads up or you just missed the deadline. Uh, it's not too sure. I'm not too sure uh, when the actual deadline is, if it's on the on the Saturday or if it's before Saturday. So who knows? Seems like you're not even sure on which podcast you're on right now, KJ. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, we have crossovers. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I think you need to fill us in because some of us doesn't know what the uh, tools with fools are. <laughs> <laughs> And what is Fools. is it a is it a challenge? What is it? Uh, Fools with Tools is uh, was my first maker podcast. So this is, it's where I found my my maker crowd, so to say, uh, and it's uh, heavily around Maker Central, uh, and they have a Facebook group that is basically the only reason I still have Facebook. Um, uh, and uh, every year for the past, I think this is the seventh year, they're doing a uh, treasure trade, which is uh, all everyone who wants to participate sign up, and then you get assigned a random uh, person uh, without them knowing it, and you're supposed to make them a gift. Uh, and then someone else gets assigned to you, and they make you a gift. And then you just send them off, and then you receive a gift. And that's really nice. Oh, it's the YouTube Secret Santa thing. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, more or less. <laughs> and that's uh, it's really fun. Uh, I think I've been doing it a couple of years now. So and the last one was the brick you made, wasn't it, KJ? Yes, the floating brick. Who was that for? Uh, that was for Dan Brent uh, in Australia, I think. I'm not sure if it ever got there because I never heard anything from him. But <laughs> <laughs> who knows? <laughs> And I didn't get any complaints that I didn't hadn't sent it off uh, at it. So, right. yeah, yeah, I don't know. Probably stopped know. in customs. It's really hard getting things into Australia. Yeah, S- Sweden's a bit tricky as well with their postage. Yeah, so <laughs> yes, it's, it's probably still in transit. I mean, give it a <laughs> give it a year or two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's quite probably in, probably in KJ's post box that got crushed on the last tree. <laughs> <laughs> But that being said, it is within, I mean, it's crossing the Swedish border either in and out. It seems to be the issue because I ordered an angle grinder and it was delivered by Postnord, which is a Swedish company and that worked perfectly. But that is a private company. It might not be affiliated with, with the Swedish postal service when I'm thinking about it. Or is it the same company? Yeah, I think it's the same company. Hmm. And it it was... Uh... It worked really well until they merged with the with the Danes. Then it all went to shit, more or less. Oh, so I blame that De- blame Denmark. <laughs> yeah, and then of course I understand that Sweden is down prioritized, and I mean, we are on best buddies terms with Danish at the moment. So, <laughs> <laughs> so a new new angle grinder. How many is that? How many angle grinders have you got now? I have three. I got inspired, yeah. so I'm I'm still not at the KJ levels, but uh, I have all three is a good number. I hold one. I have one old one, which is a uh, 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 electrocution hazard waiting to happen. Um, and then I have a small one, but that doesn't really cut it, <laughs> literally. <laughs> so uh, I bought a new one. Um, and I think it was, it's once or twice a year that ads really work. And this one company um, who sells a lot of Bosch tools, I think they start to know me. So, of course, I talked about angle grinders here uh, last week, I think it was. And then suddenly I got an email that one of the angle grinders that I has been looking at was like 15% off. And then, okay. <laughs> so now I have an angle grinder. <laughs> I feel like I'm missing out. I've only got two. Yeah. (laughs) You know what they say. (laughs) If you have two, you have none. (laughs) (laughs) One for each hand. And uh, yeah. (laughs) But then, of course, I need one more. The small one is for the small stuff in the workshop. And then I need one with the cutting blade. And then I want um, 
it's not an angle grinder, but they also have this uh, with the, the smaller rotating disc at the front, just to, to grind off edges and uh, polishing and so on. So there, there is still angle grinder-ish tools on the list. Yeah, I think I'm done with angle grinders at the moment, but I'm I'm really want to get one of those turbo planes uh, carving carving yeah. discs. Yeah, <laughs> Ooh, that looks are... really fun. I I have one of those um, for wood, and I used it to carve out the the shape of a, a like electric guitar body, and. I actually drove it over the corner of my finger and it <laughs> it didn't even change pitch or anything. It just took the <laughs> nail flesh everything off. <laughs> and I like it was just within the like probably the, the limit of the body actually it didn't cut the root of the nail so it actually grew out again. So I, I got really lucky but I realized this is a scary tool. So I have <laughs> used it a couple of times, but then it's like I kept both my hands on the angle grinder. And of course, it is a bit more awkward working with it, but I'm not like holding the workpiece with my other hand. <laughs> How did the guitar body turn out? Grinding, carving it? It turned out great. And now it has like this uh, design feature. With, it's like a red strip on it, <laughs> which is basically <laughs> embedded blood. But uh, yeah, it turned out great. <laughs> <laughs> that's metal <laughs> but i've seen also these attachment where you have like this smaller round ball on the edge yeah and yeah i want to get one of those uh at some point as well because they i mean they churn wood like butter <laughs> imagine dropping that on your lap or something <laughs> <laughs> right. it just keeps going <laughs> no uh i changed my mind i'm not getting <laughs> Started knitting a chain, chain, chain mail beforehand. Be a good way of uh, mitigating the having to have a uh, lathe, wouldn't it? Just carving bolts and things with um, those balls and whatever they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I quite like that idea. But it is. Take up less space than a lathe as well. But you should have a steady hand, I think. I mean, you can't get the same round shape, I think, without... Uh... Yeah, my hands are pretty yeah. steady. I could do. I reckon it'd be all right. Yeah. <laughs> you can make a template as well. Yeah. 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 So Prove it. Good. Do it. Do it. Make a video. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll do. <laughs> <laughs> Have a bowl off with Tim. <laughs> the, <laughs> the next tool on my list is a computer. <laughs> That's nice. where I need to go next, and I think I've got Michelle on board with that one as well now. Mm. Was the old one and not upgradable? It's um, she took some advice. They have a um, an IT company that does all the work for their for the company she works for, and um, she emailed them just to ask advice. This is upgradable, but they recommend if it's over five years old that you, it's probably not worth upgrading it. It's probably just better off getting a new one. And it is over five years old. It's one that was given to me. Yeah. yeah. I did that on, I think it's 12 years old now, the computer I have running the CNC. And I bought that when I quit my last job. And I really specced out because I wanted it to last, and it did. And then, of course, getting a new computer here one and a half years ago, I, I thought I'd do the same. And holy crap, it has become expensive. But then I found this company, and it's worth looking into because a lot of companies they rent computers for yeah. two to three years and then they change them. And of course, right. so, some company are using really uh, powerful computers because they're using uh, or doing data heavy work. And uh, there is this company here in Norway who actually take these in and refurbish them. And of course, uh, fixing the ones that are broke and then selling them off again. And these computers, have spent their entire life in an office, probably in a docking station. So I got a a powerful laptop for the third of the price if I should have bought it new. It's two years old, but it, I mean, it still have the, the, the peely plastic on because it has never been used as a, as a laptop. Mm -hmm. So I'm, my next computer is going to be one of those as well. Fantastic. I use an old laptop just to do all my laser stuff as well. 
it's quite nice just to have a, a machine dedicated to that tool, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's probably the reason, of course, upgrading the editing software also <laughs> dictated a new computer, but bringing your laptop in and hooking it up to the CNC and there's a lot of sawdust. Of course, you can yeah. blow it off with it, like the air compressor, but at, at some point it's going to take its toll on it. So yeah, it's nice to have a dedicated one. Yeah. Just do what they do in those uh, street kitchens. Just wrap it in uh, cling film. <laughs> so, <laughs> so nothing get, gets in or out. Yeah, yeah, might get a bit hot at times, but <laughs> that that's really annoying because, of course, that's one of the last things I did to it. I I think I spent about a hundred pounds getting a new battery for it because once you yank the cable out, uh, it just died instantly. And then I got a new battery, and it didn't help at all. So. I think it also doesn't charge and the old right. battery got really hot and it really started bulging. So uh, it probably broke something else in the charging circuitry or something. So it needs to be permanently connected. But I mean, that's not a problem if you're using it stationary. No, that's uh, that's uh, the big clue because if I need to unplug it and then bring it in, I have to boot it again and it's not the newest computer. So that takes a while and yeah. So yeah, new new computer. That's uh, that's always fun. Yeah, it's exciting. Exciting for me. I don't think I've ever bought a brand new computer for myself. <laughs> Have you decided on what what you're gonna get? No, uh, I just wanted something with some memory. To be fair, yeah, and, uh, because I mean getting... it's a jungle out there. Yeah, no, I'm not gonna put that much thought into it, KJ. <laughs> It'll be a, a good deal with something with adequate memory. I mean, I'm not gaming on it. I'm literally just editing videos. Because that's not hard on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the funny thing. Those two are kind of equivalent. I mean, you you don't need the the most powerful graphics card to do video editing, but uh, on everything else, you really want to spec up for it to go fast. Yeah. This this computer, I say, it's well over five years old. It's got one hundred and twenty eight gig memory on it, which is. Which I understand now is very very low. I don't even think you can buy them anymore with that, with such low memory on them, such low hard drives. So you know anything anything over this spec is going to be better, isn't it? Really. <laughs> yeah. So on that sad note, we will end today's episode. <laughs> <laughs> Go out and buy computers, kids. Yep. And, yeah. and come back for the half. Buy night. lots of them, and then uh, <laughs> start mining Bitcoin, and then you use that on your favorite YouTuber. And remember to like and subscribe. Because <laughs> Daddy needs 4,000 subscribers. Come on, it's been a year. <laughs> <laughs>